Hello ladies, it is Tiffany of Clarity, Confidence, Courage. I'm a women's life coach that helps divorced women rebuild their lives by getting very crystal clear on what it is they deeply desire, building up their confidence, building up their courage, and really creating an action plan so they can take steps and move forward faster. I'm super excited to have you here. And this week, we're gonna be talking about how your father wounds are connected to your divorce and may be the reason why you may never end up in a healthy, happy relationship unless you fix it. All right, so before we jump in, of course, as always, make sure you share, like, and subscribe to the channel so we can boost this channel up and help more women just like you who are divorced, who are ready to rebuild their lives, and who are ready to move forward. All right, let's go. So ladies, the reason I wanted to do this video about how your father wound may be tied to your divorce is because I have a personal story that definitely I was able to reflect on years later and see the connection. And when I was able to make that connection, it totally changed how I view the type of relationships I got in. And it also helped me to understand what was going on within me that I continued to attract certain types of people, especially when it came to men. Growing up, I can remember pretty much the first time I met my father. Him and my mother were not married. I think I was like four years old and we were at a park. And I can I can kind of remember my mother saying, Tiffany, this is your father and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, hi, who is this guy? <laughs> I'm sure he had seen me before then, but he never really, as far as I can remember, had interaction with me. Um, and growing up, he came in and out of my life. It was a very estranged relationship. It was like he would come in, pick me up every now and again, maybe twice a month on the weekend and we do something and then he dropped me off and that was pretty much it. And so we really never developed a strong close bond because his behavior was very inconsistent. He would come every so often, then he'd disappear for a long period of time, then he'd show up again, then he'd disappear for a long period of time. So there was a lot of inconsistencies in his behavior. And then when I was with him, you know, the times that we actually spent time together, he was very, he came off very cold. There was no deep seated emotion when I was around him. There was no feeling of love or affection or, you know, I'm so happy to see you. And so growing up as a child, even though I would sometimes see him, even when I was with him, I didn't feel that warm feeling that most children would feel with a loving, caring parent. And I knew the difference because when I was with my grandfather or my grandmother, I felt those feelings. I felt warm. I felt loved. I felt affection. I felt, you know, like these people love me. <laughs> and I did not feel that when I was with my biological father. Along with the inconsistent behavior and the cold behavior was this feeling of he was really kind of, I don't know, it felt like he was ashamed of me. A lot of times he didn't take me around other family members. I can remember, don't get me wrong, sometimes he would take me you know, around other family members, but it was very far and few in between. As I got older, when I did go to family reunions and he was there and I was there and you know, our family members were there, you know, my aunt, his sister would always be the one to initiate introducing me to the family. She's like, this is my niece, Tiffany and da da da. And she'd talk about me and she'd rave about me. But my biological father, he would kind of not do that so much. It was like, he would acknowledge me like, oh yes, this is my daughter, Tiffany. But there was really no raising. Whenever I was around extended family, yes, he would acknowledge me or say, yes, this is my daughter or hey, how are you? But again, there was this coldness and there was this distance like, I'm acknowledging you, but just know your place. You're not my legitimate child. That's how it felt. Now, maybe he was thinking something different, but that's how it felt. I always felt like I was his niece or a distant cousin's daughter versus his daughter <laughs> versus his child. And the interesting thing is when I did talk to my cousins, they loved him. He was like their favorite uncle. I literally can remember one of my cousins say, I love uncle, blah, blah, blah. And I used to think, who, who is this man? When he's with his nieces and nephews, clearly it's not the same behavior when he's with me. So because of that, of course, I was a child, I was young. And when I say a child, I mean, this is over a span of years, right? From birth to like 14, 15. In my mind, I didn't think about like, oh, he's a, a bad person or he's a bad parent or he shouldn't behave in this way. No, in my mind, my brain said, oh, he behaves this way because I'm not good enough. There's something wrong with me. I have to prove 
that I'm worthy to be his daughter. I have to prove and show him and show everyone that I'm good enough to be accepted by him, by his family. So I, I can remember just working really hard in school, trying to be the best, not necessarily always the best for him, but always the best because I didn't feel the worthiness. And when I reflect back in my adulthood, I am able, of course, all of my years of psychology and public health and studying all this stuff, I'm able to see the connection, make the dots. Part of my low self-esteem, feeling unworthy, feeling you know undesirable, feeling not valued, feeling not good enough, was that belief system that I had indirectly created inside of my brain that said, you are not good enough because your own father does not want you. So if you want your father to show you affection, to show you love, to want to rave about you to his family, then you gotta prove your worth. You gotta prove it. You gotta prove that you're good enough. You have to prove that you're smart enough. You have to prove that you are worthy to be introduced. You are worthy to be bragged about. And in order to do that, you have to do things like work really hard, get good grades, always be perfect, always, you know, try to be pretty, you know, lose weight, you know, all that type of stuff, all the superficial stuff that we see on the outside, right? In order for him to receive you, in order for him to really accept you. Now, if I'm resonating with any of you ladies out there who are watching that, please throw throw a hand up emoji down in the comment section. Throw a hand up to just let me know like, oh, Tiffany, yes, I'm feeling you. I, I, oh, that was my father. <laughs> Throw a hand up emoji in the comment section just to let me know you are with me so far. So ladies, of course, I grew up, I became a woman. This didn't go away. This scenario of me feeling like I had to prove myself specifically to men did not go away. And when I look back on my dating life, when I started to date, I dated a lot of guys, not all, but I'd say a good 75 to 80% of the guys that I dated were guys where I felt like I had to prove myself too. I couldn't just show up and be Tiffany. I had to be pretty, I had to be smart, I had to be funny, I had to be thin, I had to be, I had to have, you know, achievements. I had to achieve a lot of things. I couldn't just be myself because I always felt like I had to prove myself because of course the type of men I was attracting because I had that mindset were the type of men who definitely made me feel like, yes, you're not good enough. Yes, you are not of high value. Yes, you do have to prove your worth to me. So let me see it, show me the receipts. <laughs> so it's so interesting when I look back, I'm like, wow, the connection that I was able to reflect on and make between how I interacted with my biological father and how I interacted with a lot of men in general in my adulthood was pretty much the same. And because of that mentality that I had, <laughs> It's not that all men are like that, but because of the mentality that I had, I instantly would find myself drawn to the men who made sure to let me know directly and indirectly that I had to prove myself to them. Why, Tiffany, would I date you? Out of all these women I could have, why you? Show me you're good enough. Show me you're valuable enough. Prove to me. And that's how I, that's how I behaved all of my dating life. The one thing that my ex-husband did, which was the reason why I married him, that all these other men didn't do, he was the one person where I did not have to prove myself. Now ladies, I want you to, I want you to really sit in this and go there with me. My ex-husband, the reason that I married him was because for the first time ever, I felt like I had met a man that wasn't ashamed of me, that didn't make me feel like I had to prove myself to be with him. Now, there were a lot of red flags and other things that I ignored about this person, but the one thing that I can say that was good, and I still say that to this day, that he did, he made me feel like I was worthy. He made me feel like he was the one that should be proud to be with me. He, you know, told me and told people like, Tiffany is so amazing. Tiffany is so, I'm so proud to be in a relationship with her. He introduced me to his family fairly quickly, which was actually a red sign, red flag when I think back, but he introduced me to his family quickly. He was proud to be with me because he saw me for what I was. He saw my value and not just 
just for the way I looked or the way I behaved or, you know, my achievements, but who I was as a person, my intellect, my, my compassion, my kindness, he saw that for me. He saw me for who I really was. And that was the reason, that was the one and only reason that I married him. I accepted the bare minimum because the one thing, <laughs> the one thing that he did do that I really liked was the big thing for me. Now, ladies, the reason why this is so important for you, when you reflect back on your marriage and divorce, think about the thing. Think about the reason why you probably married your ex. And if you think about it, I want you to then think about are there any similarities between what was going on with your ex-husband or your ex-marriage and your childhood relationship that you have with your father? Now, I'm not saying that your story is exactly like mine, but the point that I'm trying to make is that sometimes not only are we drawn to the wrong people because we're feeling like we, we allow ourselves to get attracted to the same cycle that we have normalized in our brain from childhood, again, from that connection that, or disconnection we had with our, our father. We sometimes allow ourselves to get involved in relationships where the person doesn't give us everything that we want, but they give us that one thing that for us is a big deal. It is the thing that we crave. And a lot of times that is acceptance. When you have never felt a feeling of being seen, of be being heard, and of being truly accepted and valued. When a person says the right words, it will suck you in because in your mind, that is what you desire the most. They can be abusive. They can be physically abusive, mentally abusive. They can do other horrible things to you, but because they know your Achilles heel, they know that spot within you, that hole that you have been carrying since childhood, they know it's there. And so they know how to use it and manipulate it to keep you tethered and tied to them. Here's the deeper thing. If you do not heal that old wound that you had with your father or your father figure, you will still, even after a divorce, <clears throat> get into a cycle and a pattern of attracting the exact same situation over and over and over again. Nothing will change until you do. And ladies, please understand, it's not because all men are bad. No, there's amazing, wonderful, beautiful men out here. But if you don't heal, the only ones you're going to see in your peripheral are the ones that you connect with because of that wound, because of that deep wound from childhood that you never healed, that you never really truly addressed. So after you get divorced, in order to move forward, in order to start really pulling yourself out of the cycle and hopefully one day have another relationship that is healthy and is mature and is functional, you have to be willing to recognize what went on in the past that puts you in a pattern with certain types of people and certain types of behaviors that told you in your brain that it is okay for someone to behave like this and still be in my presence and still you know, be allowed to be a part of my life. You have to undo those things. But in order to do that, you have to acknowledge it. That's the first step. And after you have acknowledged the tie, after you have not acknowledged what the pattern is, the reason why you have that pattern, the next step is to start building up your belief in your value and your worth. And that takes building up your self-esteem, building up your love for yourself, being able to acknowledge that number one, you don't have to be perfect. There is no perfect person. Number two, who you are when you were born was enough. You were perfection within human nature. That, that's just who you were when you were born. And of course, there's gonna be these tangible worldly achievements that we all have and desires that we have, and there's nothing wrong with that. But there's a difference between someone loving you because of all the things you have and all the things you've achieved versus someone really truly loving you for who you are on the inside and saying you are enough even without all this other stuff you're good enough but in order to get there ladies you have to see that within yourself you have to be able to love deeply fall in love with who you are and accept yourself and find your own worthiness and value you have to get really crystal clear on how it is you desire to feel how do you desire to feel for yourself 
How do you desire for others to treat you? How, you're, how do you want to feel as you move in life in general? Because that's where you start to attract people that are on that frequency. So when you are feeling really low about yourself, when you're not feeling good enough, when you when you feel like, ah, oh, this is just good enough for me, this this low level, you know, behavior or whatever it is, those are the people you attract, and not just in relationships, in life, in jobs, in friendships. So you have to get crystal clear on how you want to feel inside of your life. Do you want to feel safe? Do you want to feel good enough? Do you want to feel proud of yourself? Do you want to feel confident? Do you want to feel courageous? Do you want to feel joyful and happy? And if though if that's the case. What is the plan to get there? That's the next step. What is the plan that's gonna get you to those feelings every single day? What are you willing to do in order to get to those feelings every single day? And of course, ladies, I always recommend therapy. You know, I had to go through a lot of therapy to figure out what is the going on here? And therapy really gave me an opportunity to reflect. It really gave me an opportunity to sit back and say, Okay, let me look back and think about my life. And so, I've had, ladies, I wanted to do this video today to really talk about how that father wound can definitely be tied to your divorce and how it will continue to be tied to all the relationships that you have in your life. I had to figure it out for myself. I had to get really, really crystal clear on what it is I deeply wanted, how I wanted to feel, and how I had to disconnect myself from those old thought patterns and limiting beliefs about my self-worth, my worthiness, and about what it is that I deserved on every level, not just on one, you know, one level, but on all the levels of my life. And once I was able to do that, I was able to really step into a happy, healthy, joyful life where I was able to attract really amazing opportunities and amazing people. So again, hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know in the comments what you thought. Give it a thumbs up, share, like, and subscribe. All right, ladies, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk soon. Bye.